Hi everybody. Uh, for this video, what I'm going to do is kind of take us away from <clears throat> aspects of sociobiologic, sociobiology and kind of relating our behavior to our biology, which is what we've been looking at for well, the, whole, the whole class. That's been a key aspect of the class is sort of how we behave, how our social behaviors are tied to our biology. I mean, that's been the sort of some of the aspects of why we've looked at chimpanzees and what we're studying when we look at uh, our immediate ancestors. So another way to kind of, and what we were looking at last week, right, when we were looking at aspects of our, our biology like our height and uh, how much surface area we have, the melanin, and how sort of how some of the ways we look, obviously our adaptations to the environment, and as well. So it's all been, been tied uh, through the class to the environment. Um, so what I wanted to do now is kind of take you into these last, this last chapter, or the second to last chapter actually. The last chapter is about the climate and climate change and, and its effects on, our, on us. Uh, but I wanted to take you into this last, these last, uh, this last chapters and have us focus in on something that's different than natural selection, and I'm going to call it social selection or cultural selection. Okay, so there's a lot of what I would argue selection taking place on a cultural or a social level that's not tied to biology. And you can easily do these uh, descriptions by um, the way I like to do it, the easiest way I like to do it, um, is um, think about, uh, say, a sport that we all know, like, say, basketball. Uh, which is dominated right now by primarily by African Americans. So if I looked at that sport and I saw all the African Americans playing professional basketball, I would then suggest, well, maybe there's an adaptation that they have that's allowing them to be better basketball players. They can jump higher, they're better shooters, or whatnot. So, um, in actuality, when you dive into this, it doesn't turn out to be the case at all, and you can make the argument against this quite easily. And in fact, in the 1950s, there were very few African Americans playing basketball. And in fact, there was a lot of Jewish people playing basketball. And people used to think and make arguments, like they do today for African Americans, that Jewish people are far better shooters and just faster and quicker on the basketball court. Well, it turns out, back then, uh, people, of Jewish origin, people of Jewish religion were playing a lot of basketball because they lived in the inner city. And they lived in inner city, and they're playing a lot of basketball all the time. They didn't have other opportunities. They perhaps were playing more than that. That's the same thing today, where you can see African Americans. Um, many of them live in uh, the city, and they see as one of the f opportunities that they might have uh, to get out of their current situation is to play basketball. And in fact, there's you know great a great uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell has written couple books on kind of statistics and why certain things happen. Well, if you put 20,000 hours into something, anything, you're going to get really good. So it turns out if you measure how many how many hours these people have been playing basketball, they've been playing that much and then that's why they're that good. Because they've managed to conquer that. You could do you could put 20,000 20, hours into anything, playing violin and you'll get good. So I can twist this around and then say, well, if I looked at baseball, today if I go and look at baseball, I'm noticing that far more Latinos, people of Latin, Spanish descent, are playing basketball, and, and there's more Asians, uh, Japanese, etc., starting to play baseball. Now, does this mean that all of a sudden, so magically, they've gotten better at baseball? That, that uh, Now that uh, that's a king play? No, not at all. And in fact, what you see is I've been to the Dominican Republic and I traveled there. I saw little kids, I'm talking five, ten-year-old kids, playing with a stick, and then a bottle cap. And then with the bottle cap, they literally were just flicking the bottle cap at each other. And when they would flick the bottle cap at each other, they would swing the bat and turn hit this bottle cap. And it's an amazing they were playing this game. So can you imagine once they start playing with a real baseball, the baseball looks like a watermelon. The baseball must look huge because their entire childhood they've been playing with this small little bottle cap. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about would be cultural or social selection, as it's talked about in, in, the, um, in the book. Okay? There are very few uh, black folks, African Americans, uh, playing hockey. Does that mean 
African Americans can't skate well? No, it means that they don't usually learn how to skate because that is a, a, a sport and an activity that culturally they don't do. Okay, so you can easily twist all these things around to um, make an argument against um, natural selection as being the reason a lot of things happen. And in fact, a lot of things are culturally selected. So. You just have to always be aware of that when you, say, take information from this class and you think about, well, adaptations and natural selection. So obviously, uh, nature has selected these people to do certain things. Uh, nature has selected individuals to be better basketball players. Well, the argument, pretty strong against that. In fact, scientifically, doesn't float. Um, for the first reason, right, that there's no real... Um, scientific way to ascertain race, and I described that last week, um, that uh, genetically, phenotypically, and genotypically, you just do not see races as being any there being any variation. And in fact, within African populations, there's far more variation. So we don't see that uh, and uh, with, with race. So what I'm trying to clarify for you is here, you've got to be careful. Even after you've taken this class, you have to be careful in making arguments based on evolution and natural selection and uh, adaptations uh, as being the reason for why you see something out there. Because there is a lot of cultural pressures creating situations which might, from the outside, if I wanted to put um, a Darwinian mindset on something, I could and I have to be careful about that. Okay? Cool. That is all for that little bit of lecture. Bye.